Every club wants to have a bigger impact in their community. They want an organization that people are eager to be a part of, one where every member enjoys their Rotary experience and improves their community. Many don't realize that most clubs will lose 15% of their current members each and every Rotary year. 15% of a 40-member club is six members gone. Club experience is a primary reason members stay, but it's also the primary reason they leave. Life changes beyond our control are another common reason members move on. If we aren't working on creating an engaging experience for current members and attracting new members to replace the ones we're losing, how can we truly make the impact our communities need when our clubs are shrinking at this rate? As a volunteer organization, most of us don't have the time to search for information or ideas about growing members in our clubs. The Membership Action Plan makes it easy. On our interactive website, you'll find a toolbox full of easy to implement strategies, along with real-time data about your club's membership. The only formula for consistent membership growth is intentional work on both attraction and engagement. By following the Membership Action Plan, you'll gain insight on accelerating membership growth, confidence on engaging current members, and clarity in making your club irresistible. To kickstart your membership growth, one, set your goals in the Membership Action Plan website. Two, attend the monthly Membership Action Plan webinars. Three, implement the attraction and engagement strategies to become irresistible. Hope is not a strategy for membership growth. If you added more members to your club, how could you make a greater impact in your community and in your club members' lives? Make a bigger impact in your community and create an irresistible club for your members. Set your goals in the Rotary Membership Action Plan website to take the first step. And now without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome to our MAP webinar stage, our Rotary International Director, Jeremy Hurst. Take it away, Jeremy. Thank you, Andy. Happy New Year, everyone. Uh, welcome to this month's MAP webinar. Of course, two inevitable things happen at the start of each year. The first is that it's International Assembly time for all of our irresistible governors-elect this time around to enable them to finalize their learning as they prepare to take over on July 1st. And this year's International Assembly, which I had the pleasure of attending along with Director-elect Patrick, was a magical one in more ways than one. To me, the highlight was that both President-elect Stephanie and President nominee Mario clearly stated in their speeches that their main priorities will be the challenge and opportunities that membership growth bring during the two coming years. This continuity recognizes not only that membership is our number one organizational priority, but also by using our action plan, we can create irresistible experiences for all of our members. Now, the other thing that happens as we turn the year is that many of our clubs experience, unfortunately, high membership loss. And once we know that this is somewhat inevitable, we must take action now if we want to achieve membership growth in our clubs and our districts this Rotary year. I've seen the amazing work your clubs do. I know you want to serve your community's needs in bigger and better ways. And that starts with membership growth. Today, you'll review the Membership Success Center and see where you stand. Plus learn successful membership traction techniques to start your 2024 on the right foot. Laying the foundation for stronger clubs, spreading greater impact in your communities and building year over year membership growth. These strategies are proven to work. So give them a try. I believe in you and so do your members. And so do those we've committed to help as we build lasting change across the globe, in our communities and in ourselves. So let's make this happen. I'll now turn the stage over to Zone 34 Assistant Rotary Coordinator, Mary Ligon to help guide us through tonight's program. Mary, over to you. Thank you, Jeremy, and welcome everybody back from International Assembly, if you were down there. Our theme topic tonight is review, 
refine and revitalize our membership attraction. So we expand our reach, increase our impact, just as Jeremy said. To revitalize our efforts and know where to refine our activities so we ultimately grow, we must first understand our current reality. So let's start with a review of our progress to date. We're all familiar with the December drop-off in membership, so now is the perfect time to check our progress. Zone 33 Rotary Coordinator Terry Weaver is here to help us with this review, Understanding the Membership Success Center Progress Dashboard. Terry, you've helped create new membership tools in our new Membership Success Center. Can you help us understand why we needed something a little different? Sure, Mary. As many of you that have been around Rotary for decades know, our usual reporting of net gain or loss of members is really the only <clears throat> metric of success that we've had. Uh, but it turns out it's not very useful. It's actually highly misleading because it fails to answer several questions. First, exactly how did a club get to that particular gain or loss at this point of the year, mid-year? How many new members have they added compared to how many they need? And how many members have they lost? Just looking at net gain year to date really gives a false sense of progress. It's a very poor performance indicator. Wow. Um, so what do you think is the most helpful report for clubs to use during the year? Well, attrition is pretty predictable based on the average membership loss of a given club over, say, the past three years. And successful clubs realize they need at least enough new members to replace those that are likely to terminate, which will be about the same number as usual, plus some for moderate growth, whatever that growth goal is. You know, in our businesses, we realize that we have to get new orders each month, starting at the first of the year, in order to meet our revenue goals, right? Well, wouldn't the same apply to new members in a Rotary Club? If we know, for example, that our 40-member club loses six members a year, wouldn't it make sense that we need to get a new member at least every other month, starting with the first month of the year? And that's just to break even. So in the Membership Success Center, we've built a progress dashboard that works on that basis. Looking at the club's net membership growth goal, then adding the number of additional members needed to replace those likely to terminate based on our recent attrition history. Then we compare that with the pace we'd need to attract those new members month by month to get that total by the end of the year. Wow. Well, I'm a visual learner, Terry, and somewhat math challenged in my head. So can you show us an example of that dashboard? Sure. Let's have a look at a newer club, Green Greer, South Carolina. And now Greer is an example of a club that's right on pace. They need 10 new members to meet their aggressive growth goal of seven, plus replace their likely attrition. They do really well at that. They've averaged three members a year of terminations. So the new member attraction pace is shown graphically as a ramp that begins July 1st and ramps to the total number of new members that are needed by June 1st. That gives us the month of June for some final course correction in case we're a bit behind. And the vertical blue bars, those are their actual new members. So you can see they got off to a little slow start. Then they got ahead of that pace line for October, November, and December 1st. And having not attracted the new member in December, puts them right on the pace as of January 1st. If they keep attracting members consistently at their current pace, one a month, they'll meet their goal with no problem. And the point of this graphical view is despite the fact that they're up two members as of today, they need to keep their new member attraction pace going at a rate of one a month to be successful. To help users understand this pace ramp, there's a little pop-up tool tip in this circle with a question mark that explains it. It says this line represents a steady month-to-month -month pace of new member additions to reach your membership goal for the year. Try to meet or exceed the goal line each month with your pace of attracting new members. Well, do most clubs look this good? Well, sadly, no. Here's another club that is more the norm in most districts at this time of the year. Now, they've attracted three new members and lost only one, so if we take our typical look at only net gain or loss, we see them at plus two for the year, and for some reason that causes us not to worry about them. 
when in fact, we should be extremely worried about them. Here's a closer look. They should be at nine new members to be on track. They're already six members short of where they needed to be by the 1st of January. That's a serious red flag, completely uh, camouflaged by only looking at their plus two net gain for the year. They have a lot of catching up to do and no time to spare. They're not even on pace to cover their average attrition, let alone their growth goal. So they need another 14 members over the next five months. Uh, folks, I invite you to check out this progress dashboard in the Membership Success Center. When you come into the Membership Success Center from DACDB, click on the progress dashboard link on the left-hand side. It'll drop right into your own club's progress dashboard. So Terry, what happens if a club has not entered a goal in the Membership Success Center? What we do in that case is assume a goal of 5% net membership gain, a reasonable, moderate membership gain for any club. We figure the number of members needed to accomplish that and then add in their actual historical average membership loss. So that way, even a club that's not set a goal has a progress dashboard that works. It's relevant and assuming a moderate membership gain of 5% is reasonable, it seems to be about right. Of course, if they actually set a membership goal, then the new members needed and pace to goal ramp adjusts accordingly. So that's great information for clubs. If I'm an assistant governor or a district governor, how do I use this with my clubs? If it were me, I'd have the club's progress dashboard open on my screen when I placed a call to the president or membership chair to talk about membership, because you have pretty much everything you need for a conversation with clubs about their membership progress. You know how many new members they need, you know how many they've attracted year to date, and you know how many they've lost. So when you see a club like the one we looked at with a net gain of two, they're probably feeling pretty good, but you actually know that they're behind pace by six. So that conversation is likely to be a bit more of a wake up call than they expected. Now on that same page, you also know the problems that that specific club needs to solve. Is it high attrition? Is it low attraction? Perhaps both or perhaps neither. So we're going to post a link in the chat to a video that explains how to use this report. There's also a report version of the progress dashboard. And that shows all the clubs in a table if you want to quickly spot clubs that are ahead or behind pace. Now, this is for, of course, district leaders to look across the entire district. And that's the year-to-date progress by club report. It has a sortable pace column where a district leader can see and easily spot clubs that are doing well. And of course, those in trouble, but they may not realize it. Terry, thanks for showing that. Seeing that on the screen is very helpful. It's important to understand our progress to date and adapt our plans as needed to attract new members to our clubs. We're interested in you, our participants tonight, with your familiarity with the Membership Success Center. So we're gonna have a poll. If that would get launched, we'd love to hear your responses or see your responses to the four questions that are in the poll. We'll give you just a few seconds to answer that. Let's take a look at what we have. Okay. So on the question of received a, a zone, uh, uh, an email from a zone coordinator, 77% uh, of the people on the call have seen that and have the membership, 72% uh, have the membership success center icon set up in DACDB. 85% of our participants say they have checked their club's progress uh, in attracting members this year using the progress dashboard. And the pace with respect to goal through January 1st, my club is ahead of new member attraction, 32%, behind 58%, about what we'd expect and not sure, uh, 11%. So thanks for your participation in that. That gives us some good insight into how you're using these tools. Yes, it does. So now that we have a better understanding of our current reality, how can we refine or adapt our efforts to attract more members? Because clearly we need to do that. Is Discover Rotary a tool that would be useful, Terry? Mary, a Rotary Information Hour, some call that Discover Rotary, is quite simply the highest return of new members attracted for the least investment of your time. You will get more new members 
out of a given amount of time spent on this activity than anything else we know of. It's simply an overview of Rotary and your club presented to a group of prospects. It, it's like a business meeting. It's not a club meeting. And your prospects, of course, are people brought by your members who they think would be good Rotarians. And the results for clubs that have done Discover Rotary, according to the recipe. Now, if you decide to reinvent it into something else, we can't guarantee the results. But if you go by the book, you'll be surprised at the success rate of Discover Rotary. In fact, most clubs say they get about a 50% conversion rate, uh, say three or four prospects will typically turn into at least two new members. So with us this evening, we have a couple of speakers who will share their firsthand experience with Discover Rotary. And the first is past Governor Dana Orsini of the Rotary Club of Shepherdstown, West Virginia in District 7360. Now, Dana's been a leader building membership in his district and they ended up last year with a net gain. Not surprisingly, they're also on track to repeat that performance this year. So Dana, would you share your experience with Discover Rotary with us? Yeah, absolutely, Terry. Uh, one of the other hats I'll wear is I'm the membership chair for my home club of Shepherdstown. And our club was chartered in 1987 as a morning breakfast club meeting at the renowned Bavarian Inn Resort on the banks of the Potomac River in the historic bustling metropolis of Shepherdstown which has a current population of 1,300. Fast forward to 2017-18, we decided to test the water by offering an evening satellite group, which we registered in June of 2018. Credit goes to past president Michelle Maiden and then membership chair David Gross for their unwavering determination to see this through to fruition. This was the first step of an intentional strategy to increase our club's impact through membership growth. It was a lot of work, but during the pandemic, we were able to su sustain our membership without a net loss. Presidents Terry Anderson and Steve Campbell were unbelievable in adapting and keeping our club experience vibrant. With that said, we were able to hit the ground running last year and increase our membership from 70 to 83. That's 18.5% growth rate. Our evening group led by Chair Terry Beeble was and is instrumental to our growth Again, this is a, in a town with a population of 1,300. The driving force behind this success is that our club leadership is all in on membership growth and are willing to follow, use, buy what we learn in these MAP webinars. Our goal is to have people standing in line to join our club. Understanding the need for momentum going into the second half of our Rotary year, in October, we, uh, immediate past President Sean Murtaugh, President Jim King, President-elect Terry Keyes, and myself as the membership chair started planning a Discover Rotary event for November 29. Having done many of these successfully in the past, I immediately had major heartburn when Kara suggested that we had a social club. I reluctantly consented uh, as long as we not lose focus as to the purpose, which unfortunately, I must admit, I repeated probably way more times than I should have. So I, as I was coming to term with this wrinkle, uh, she suggested bringing in the Charlestown Club and doing a joint event. Well, now I was doubly concerned as this really wasn't following the program, so to speak. Talk about heartburn. Well, we all agreed and decided that we wanted to focus on our respective memberships being people of action and the impact that our clubs have working both individually and jointly here in Jefferson County, West Virginia. Kara and Julie uh, Uhas, a past president from the Charlestown Club, created a flyer that we could use to advertise. We posted it to our respective websites, Facebook pages, and Instagram. Now, I'm not a techie, but I think Kara created a Facebook of, event where she could invite possible attendees. Club members shared the event on their personal pages as, as well. And we also sent emails and texts with the flyer as follow-ups the prospects that we knew were interested. Next up was freshening our Discover Rotary slide deck to include both clubs. We then decided to include the leadership for the two clubs to actually do the script for the event. I would cover the RI and district slides. President Amy of Charlestown would talk about her club. President Jim would do the same for Shepherdstown. 
Karen Julia would highlight some of the projects and socials that we do together, as well as the opportunity for individual growth. Sean would do the close as to why the prospects should join. With all these moving parts, surely nothing could go wrong. Well, D-Day came and it went off without a hitch. District Governor Herb Smith and District Governor-elect Pam Wagner were in attendance and each made closing remarks as well. Between the two clubs, we had 25 potential members in attendance. The room was decorated for the holidays with uh, conversation tables scattered about. We provided hors d'oeuvres and a cash bar was available. And the next day we emailed uh, those that expressed real interest to see if they actually wanted to submit an application. So I'm happy to say the Shepherdstown Club inducted four of these new members in December. Currently we have an additional six applications in the general membership review phase, and we will start inducting some of those this week. We're still in contact with the others that have not submitted their app as of yet. And District Governor Herb now wants to take the show on the road to see if we can duplicate this approach in other areas of our district. I will keep you posted and back to you, Mary. Dana, that's great. Congratulations on a successful event. And thank, thank you, you for sharing how we might refine our plans by partnering with other clubs to have joint Discover Rotary or, Dis or Rotary Information Sessions. Let's hear another idea on how we could increase member attraction from Doug Terhune. Doug is currently the membership chair for the Rotary Club of Fort Pierce in District 6930. He has been successful in attracting new members by recognizing business leaders in the community. Doug, tell us your recipe for this business leaders lunch and the critical elements to be successful with this approach because it's not for everybody. Thank you, Mary. Before I get to the presentation, what I'd like to do is have everybody do a little role playing with me, if you could. Picture you get home this evening and you've got two letters at your favorite chair and you open up the first letter. And in the first letter, it says the following. It says, Dear Chris, the Kiwanis Club of Orlando is excited to invite you to their annual membership drive meeting on April 11th. That's letter number one. Letter number two you receive says, Dear Chris, the Rotary Club of Orlando would like to invite you to a business leaders luncheon on April 11th, where you will be honored for your continued community service. Now, I know this is rhetorical, everybody, but if you were to respond and attend one of those meetings, which one do you think you might be more likely to attend? So if we can, um, let's let's see if we can discuss uh, really uh, what's going to make a, a, a good uh, business leaders luncheon. The first question I have to ask everybody is, does your club need new members? Now, I know once again, this is rhetorical, but I don't think there's many clubs out there right now that are full to the brim of members. Uh, certainly COVID took a hit on just about every kind of civic organization out there. But just so you know, it when I say business leader luncheon, if you're a breakfast club or a dinner club, just substitute that word for the word luncheon in there. So really, it's a, a business leaders event. Uh, but if you do a business leader event, I promise you, you will revive your club. Your club members will become so excited. And I promise you this to be true. Everyone I've ever been involved with, it is the most exciting Rotary Club meeting you will probably attend in five to ten years. I'm not, I'm not getting on that. And you will grow your club. It's, but it's remembered, it is a marathon. It's not a sprint. Uh, this takes a while sometimes for it to take hold, but you will get new members out of that. And I'll tell you later a little bit about how the fact that it can also help you with your fundraiser. So let's see and take a look at how to run a successful business leader event. Okay. About two to three months before the, uh, you hold your, your business leader event, you're going to give everybody at your uh, Rotary meeting and your club pieces of paper, and you're going to ask them to provide you with the name and information 
of two possible new members. Now, when I say the word require, I'm serious about that. Uh, the reason why I say that, we're not suggesting, we're not, it is requirement. If you want to be successful in this meeting, you really need the name of uh, good people in, out in your community. And when you ask the people to do that, have them consider age, race, classification, energy, you know, just don't invite your friends. Bring strategic people in the in the in your community that you think would be good business leaders, aka good Rotarians. It's very important that everybody provide the name of every uh, of uh, not only the names but the address, the email, uh, and the classification job of each. One of the most important jobs of this uh, to be successful in this business leader event is to have somebody who knows how to run a spreadsheet uh, because this person is going to be busy taking in all this information, keeping the club up to date. It's something that every week you will come back to the club and say, okay, we've got, uh, you know, 25 names and we're looking to add more. Once you have all of your names collected, you're going to send out a snail mail. How about that? An old snail mail with a uh, automatic return pre-stamp postcard. And you're going to be asking people to RSVP. What a novel idea to ask somebody to RSVP. But in that letter, you will be asking the people to attend this meeting and letting them know they're going to be honored. You are going to honor them at your, uh, at your meeting. And remember, everybody, when you think about the, the origins of Rotary, it was four people. They got together, and what were they? They were nothing more than four businessmen that got together. So this is following in the footsteps of our history of our own club. So once you finish doing all the spreadsheets, you're going to follow up with emails. Um, and if we can now, let's talk about the, the, the key elements of the actual meeting itself. The meeting must run on time. And I also am serious about this, that you, if you are a lunch club, a breakfast club, a dinner club, have it at your normal meeting place and have it at your normal meeting time. You, This is a meeting. You're inviting some people to come and join you and see you in your element. So don't have... This is not a party. This is a business meeting. It needs to be run. And when I say it needs to be run on time, it needs to be run exactly to the minute because these people are going to be judging you and your club as to how well you run a meeting. Very important here. This is going to be strange to people, but never, never mention the word membership drive because people, as a natural reaction to that, have a, I, I like to call it tissue rejection uh, to the phrase membership drive. Um, also, if you serve meals, for this meal, you need to have a buffet. Extremely important for time frame. you need to offer a buffet. Introduction, about everybody in the room is asked to stand up. You have about 20 seconds. Hello, my name is Doug. I'm from Jensen Beach, Florida, and I'm recently retired. Everybody sits down. You gotta keep that moving. Introduction, you're gonna start the meeting however you start the meeting officially. Um, and then you're going to have some time for fellowship and dining. Gave me everybody a chance to chat, just like a normal Rotary meeting. And then you're going to have one, depending upon your time frame, one to two members are going to have five minutes each. And they're going to uh, give a little talk on why did they join Rotary? It's going to be very personal. It's going to probably hit home with a lot of the people in the audience. Then you're also going to have probably by the president, a five minute overview of the club. And that's going to involve the history of your club. Uh, talk about the events that you do, the charities that you sponsor, et cetera. Then you're going to have what's probably the most important part is a five-minute wrap-up um, and followed by the four-way test. But if I can, let's talk and get a little bit more in-depth into the five-minute wrap-up, or as I like to call it, the challenge to your business leaders. You're going to thank them for being business leaders. Now, think about it. When was the last time anybody on this webinar was thanked for being a business leader within your own community? It's probably been a while. Your guests, it's, it's, you got to put this in perspective. They are the ones that helped probably were very influential in creating your town and your community and making what it is today. So you're going to thank them and appreciate them for doing that. Um, and you're going to remind them that as business leaders, it's incumbent upon themselves to give back to their communities. And as business leaders, they all know this as a business leader, People follow them. So it's very important as people follow you, okay, that you're doing something good. Now, what I like to kind of close that portion up with is to say and challenge the people, ladies and gentlemen, 
We don't care if you join the Kiwanis Club or the Lions Club, if you join your church or if you want to participate in hospice or the Boys and Girls Club. But as a business leader, go back into your community and continue serving it the best way that you can see forward. But the most important thing, everybody, is for you to lead because you are, after all, a business leader. As we finish up the event, uh, we present each guest with a token of the club's appreciation. Historically, what we've done is a, a paperweight, a four inch by four inch piece of granite with the words uh, of the plaque on there. It's on there, business leader of Fort Pierce, Florida. Um, and, and then the rotary emblem on there as well. So that's really wraps up the business leader luncheon. Thank you, Doug. Tonight we've heard how to review our progress so we know where we may need to refine our plans. We've heard ideas, thorough ideas, for how we might use Discover Rotary sessions or business leader events to revitalize our membership attraction process and expand our reach, which ultimately increases our impact. So we've taken a little extra time with our poll and other things tonight, so we don't have quite as long for Q&A, but it is time to hear from you. And Terry is going to serve as our moderator tonight for Q&A, and Dana and Doug will be available to further answer your questions as well. So Terry, I'm going to give the Zoom stage to you. Thanks, Mary. I appreciate that. Well, we have a couple of questions for our presenters. Um, let's let's start out with a question for Dana. Uh, Dana, would you share with us uh, just a few of the basic mechanics of just how did you get attendees registered for your event, and how did you get their contact information so that you could follow up? How did you how did you collect all that? So most of the uh, attendees were specifically uh, invited by Rotary. So we had their contact, or at least someone had their contact, uh, whether it was through our uh, Facebook event page or what. We did have a, a couple of attendees that actually were former Rotarians new to the geographic area and uh, saw the flyer and showed up because they wanted to see what was going on. So uh, that was the start. Uh, and once we had their uh their email address, et cetera, we, uh, we kept going with it. Okay. Did, did you do anything uh, particular within Facebook on that front? So, so we had it on Facebook, and then with the Facebook uh, uh, event, she was able to invite specific and then track their, uh, them with that. So... Uh, uh, all the players were confident that the uh, we would have the guests there that, that we wanted. So we we were looking for a, a big group, and, and it turned out we had one. Doug, can you uh, can you share with us the business leader lunch message template? Uh, that, do you have something that you could uh, maybe we could post on the Zone website? I I do, Terry, and and if I can, I, I'd like to just really give everybody a, an idea of also where rubber meets the road. We did hold in my Fort Pierce Rotary Club uh, our first ever business leaders luncheon at that club at the end of April this past year. Uh, we had 47 members uh, at the club in that time. We had 40 members show up at that meeting, and we had 84 guests show up to that meeting. 84 business leaders showed up. We had guests, business leaders out in the hallway. The meeting was so crowded. We had everybody that was important in, in Fort Pierce that was there. And since that event, we have inducted 21 new members and we have applications in-house for three more, and we know there's a lot more people coming after that. A question also came up. Doug, have you done this on more than one occasion? Yes, we've done it in a couple of the clubs here in our, our uh, district here in Southern Florida. And I started this in 2005 in Shalote, North Carolina, and did it about 10 times in North Carolina. Just curious, um, another person asked, uh, were there any perhaps retirees that had had a career but uh, no longer active in it uh, included in this? Oh, absolutely. Yes, when we say classifications, we, we like to include uh, retirees in there as well. So certainly uh, retirees are absolutely positively welcome uh, to show up. Uh, to be honored as business leaders. Absolutely, absolutely. Because 
they've they've contributed in the past and even though they may have moved from New Jersey to to Florida we are still knowing that if they're business leaders they're going to contribute down here in Florida as well as they did in New Jersey great uh, Dana question for you um how how did your how did your program kick off did it start off like a club meeting or or what was it what was the kind of opening gun no, it was a totally separate event, and uh, you, you you walked in, and as I said, it was decorated, the high-top conversation tables, hors d'oeuvres there, and it was very social. We offered, uh, you know, coffee, tea, water deal, uh, but there was a cash bar available, and we let them mingle for a couple minutes. It, it started at 6. At 6.30, we actually kicked off the Discover Rotary program. program. Um, and someone else asked, Doug, could you describe or, or show us a, a sample of this little uh, this little take home uh, memento that you gave to your guests? It, in what I'm going to send uh, to the district where it'll be on the chat, there'll be a picture of what it is. It's a piece of granite with a plaque on it. It says business leader for Pierce, Florida, and has the rotary wheel on it. And I can assure you this. If I went back to the people who went to the first business leader luncheon in 2005 in North Carolina, they still have those sitting proudly on their desk today. Give us a ballpark of what uh, what you spent on those. Probably ten dollars each. Okay. And if you if you have a granite company, even better. <laughs> they need to be a member, right? <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> there's an opportunity. Knock hey, on every door. If, if you're if you're in the business of tombstones, it, it sounds like a target rich environment to me. <laughs> so, Dana. Um, Question, if, if you had to do this over again, if you were doing another one of these, or perhaps you probably are, but what are some things that you might uh, do a little bit different that you might tweak up a little bit? I would tweak up the rehearsal part of it. Uh, I, I kind of like personally having everything scripted and you know exactly what the next person's going to say. Uh, I'll be honest with you, uh, we weren't there, uh, but it, it still worked. We didn't see the final slide deck presentation the three hours before the, the event and with everyone's assignment. So uh, I, that I would do different. Um, I One of the things that I think really worked was having different people. I've done so many of these throughout the district where it's kind of like a college lecture. I'm doing all the script and uh, they're sitting there watching the slides and then we'll Q&A uh, This was the uh, totally different environment and uh it, it really worked so your presenters rehearsed individually but you just never really had something where you got together oh absolutely yeah we had the slide assignment and uh yeah so yeah there was rehearsal that one. yeah it's 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 critically important in something like this i think that people are prepared and you know up to speed not just trying to do it off the cuff absolutely and we have used this for our club not in this format. And part of the format was just the time of the season. Uh, the Bavarian Inn where that hosted us is, uh, you know, they're all decorated for the holidays, so we made use of it. And uh, yeah, a little bit different. Um, how, how did you how'd you budget for this? How did you figure what this thing was going to cost you? We actually uh, put it together, picked out some more germs, and uh, – and, and got a price of it, then tried to figure out where the money was going to go. So uh, uh, our club funded this one. Charlestown's going to do the same thing in the spring, and uh, they'll play host. Uh, and so you know, in, in that county, the two clubs are roughly 20 miles apart, and um, uh, they will host and, and cover the expenses. Um, Doug, same question. If you had it to do over, if you were running another one of these, uh, anything that you'd do different based on your experience of running a few? Well, since I've done the first one, which is 2005, I've been doing this a long time. So um, I I think it's just, it's exciting. It's, it's it, it, uh, every time I've been to one, people walk out of that meeting just like joyful and happy. So I don't know that I have any specific tweaks on it. I think it depends on the club and I think it really works depends on getting with the, uh, the, the membership chair. Uh, one thing I will say that I think we've started to do a little bit better job on is that I think every club has 
people that have fallen out, maybe somebody who was the mayor, somebody who was the police chief, somebody who was the head of ABC company down the street. And over the years, those people have gone away uh, from the club. Make sure some of those people are intertwined into the invitation list and get back some of the important people and positions in your town and county and city that you've lost. That's, that's a really good idea. Har harvest a few of those potentially uh, uh, drifted away members. Exactly. Great. Yeah, Terry, that, I'd like to add, we use that approach as well uh, with our Discover Rotary. Two of the members we'll be inducting this week are past presidents of two different clubs uh, that had gotten out of Rotary. And uh, they kind of come to our event, see, we're able to see what we are doing and sit down, we're ready to get back in. So. Well, I think that's important. If, if we are, in fact, reinventing these clubs into things that are more attractive, things that are a product that's more irresistible, somebody that got tired of the old Model A club might have an interest in coming back if it's, if it's something different. Guys, thanks to both of you. We really appreciate your contribution this evening. Uh, thanks to the other presenters. Thanks to Mary and Mike and the other people working in the background. We got a substantial tech team back behind this, and we we appreciate your we appreciate your effort. And to everybody in the audience, we participate. We appreciate your participation. Thank you all uh, for doing the Q and A. Really appreciate that. Um, thank you to Terry for moderating the Q and A, and thank you to Mary for emceeing our program this evening. To all of you in the audience, I hope tonight you got confidence to host a Discover Rotary event or create something like a business leaders event. There is no better time than now to try one of these ideas to help her grow your club. As you heard from Terry, Dana, and Doug, adapting how you introduce Rotary to prospects can engage your club, reach new people, and expand your ability to impact your community. It's no accident that Rotary's action plan provides a template to grow Rotary and to create irresistible clubs. Our January map action item is to hold a Rotary information session before April 30th, 2024. If you have questions regarding the awards program, please put them in the chat box. And you can report your club's uh, completion of the action items at the rizones33-34.org slash map dash awards website. And now for a few upcoming webinars. On Tuesday, January the 23rd, join the Zone 3334 public image team for an insightful webinar designed to demystify the realm of artificial intelligence, aka AI. In today's rapidly evolving landscape, understanding how to effectively leverage AI tools is essential. This session aims to equip attendees with practical knowledge on utilizing AI with a specific focus on ChatGPT and other cutting edge AI technologies. That event happens on, again, Tuesday, January the 23rd at 6 p.m. Eastern, and you can register at elevaterotary.org. The next MAP webinar will be about onboarding, your ticket to engage members. In this session, you'll unlock potential, increase impact, and enhance participation. That will be on Monday, February the 12th at 6 p.m. Eastern, and you can sign up for this webinar uh, using the link in the chat. Also coming up, Zone 33's district training is April 11th through the 13th at Virginia's Crossings. This training seminar is guaranteed to offer new perspectives, suggest practical and tactical activities, and build fellowship amongst Rotarians. Register for the Zone 33 district team training now. And if you're in Zone 34, your district leadership seminar is slated for June 22nd and 23rd at the Crown Plaza Jacksonville Airport. Mark your calendars now. Thanks for being on with us this evening. And don't forget to register and uh, come back on February the 12th for the onboarding your ticket to engage members. We look forward to seeing you next month. Have a great month.